My name is Erica Greenberg Schneider. I am owner and master printer of Bleu Acier Inc. on Columbus Drive, which is a full contract print shop as well as a small publishing fine art print company. And I'm an associate professor for printmaking in the graphic design program at USF St. Petersburg. And as you all know, uh, we're all trying to put our classes online. So we've been working at ways to teach printmaking online. So today I'm going to do a demonstration for you for water-based uh, monotypes, sometimes called trace monotypes. And it's a very simple thing that everyone can do at home. So first, let's take a look at the materials we're gonna need. I use a water-based speedball relief printing ink. You can get all the colors you want. Today I'm gonna to do the demo just with black ink and you'll always need their ink retarder. Ink retarder slows down the drying time of inks. Water-based media, as everyone knows, dries much more quickly than oil-based media. So you need to have this. Um, and this is all gonna be able to be cleaned up with water in your sink with dishwashing liquid. So it's not a major cleanup task. So you need your ink. You'll need a palette knife. You can use a plastic palette knife or this kind, this is a Bondo card that I have that I usually ink with, but I can also use it for mixing ink. Or a um, metal ink knife, whatever is good for you. A brayer, I use the four inch, this is a speedball brayer. These are relatively inexpensive. Also very easy to get at Dick Blick. Then you'll need, um, if you need to trace, you know, you need a guide, you'll need your drawing. I traced uh, an image from a photograph. and you're gonna to need to print on relatively thin paper. Um, so I'm gonna to use today this, uh, this is a tra kind of tracing paper you can buy um, at Blitz. It comes in a roller form like this. You can use rice paper, newsprint. Um, all those things pick up ink relatively calmly and smoothly, so there should be no problem. So the first thing we're, we're gonna do is prepare our ink. So you wanna prepare a little bit at a time. And then for that much, um, with the, I wanna make sure there's not too much water on the top. And you just want a little, a little bit of the um, retarder. Put these away. And then you wanna mix this really, really well. I'll lift this up so you can see it better. Now I'm using pieces of Plexi because I have these relatively available in my studio. You can use um, anything smooth, throw away palettes, acetate, just not anything paper-based. Wax paper in the kitchen, parchment paper. But I like Plexi because they, um, it's sturdy. And you can get cheap pieces of Plexi either at Blick or also Home Depot, of course. So we're gonna take a little bit of this and we're gonna run it across. And then you wanna roll it out. You don't want too much ink on here. It'll dry quickly and become very difficult to use. So you really want to roll this out. All right, once that's done, we're going to make our slab for the image. So the next thing you want to make sure that you have readily available are tools for marking. So I have a 2B, a 6B, a mechanical pencil, a ballpoint pen, and a gel pen. These will all make different kinds of lines. The 6B is gonna be um, much softer. Um, the 2B will be harder, of course. The mechanical pencil, very hard. The ballpoint pen kind of in between, and uh, this thin. So now, we're gonna ink up our slab. We need to make the image. So, you wanna make it kind of even. 
This is called feathering. You go up in one way, down and back, and a different way, and in both directions. Then we go back to the slab. Get some more ink. And we're gonna pull it, we're gonna roll it out well. Roll it out again. And this is something you have to build up. Not too thick. And not too thin either, or the lines won't be that nice. So what you're looking for is a sheen. A light sheen on the plate, which looks like it's equal. You'll be able to see it, it's really not that hard. Okay, and you gotta go pretty pretty quickly. So I have my drawing attached to my paper with little pieces of tape so it won't move. I'm gonna gently put it down. Now what you wanna do is your fingers, if I do this, I'm gonna do this on purpose, you see, that's gonna print. So any um, time you touch this, it will print. So you don't wanna be dragging your hand around. So now I'm gonna trace this. And I'm gonna have all my things at hand. So first, I trace this from a photograph. The sweater was very dark, so that's what I'm gonna do. with these is to be able to make really nice marks, just like a drawing, all right? Then I start working on the hair, which I know as well it was dark at the time, but I'm gonna try to make it more delicate than the sweater. face a little bit and I'm gonna use maybe my lighter pencil and so just remember the harder you press the darker the lines gonna be so you want to make sure you remember when you're making your image that you're gonna trace that you identify what is dark and what is light Okay, so I have my drawing pretty much in place and you can keep working, I would say 15 minutes before the ink starts to dry. And so I also use some stencils sometimes and I love these architectural curves. So I'm gonna give a kind of background to this and I'm gonna use for that, I'll use the pen so you can see the kind of mark that does. And then, you know, if you're curious, which I always am, you can lift up and see how it's coming. Oh, pretty good. So I'm gonna lift this up and show it to you. So I'll do it this way. And if you leave it taped on the back, you know, you can do a second color, another run, and it'll be read, automatically registered, right? So you can see that 
One of the things, the difference, so I did this in pen, I pushed hard. This was the, um, the mechanical pencil inside the face. The hair was the 2B, the sweater was the 6B. So as you vary your instruments, you will vary the surface of this. And see the fingerprints? I mean, you can work with your hands. You can draw pretty much with anything because it's pressure that makes this work, okay? And to clean up, the only thing you need is water. So you can literally just take this to the sink or you can scrape it up, which is what I do first. You can scrape it up and then wash it down. But you don't want to let it dry hard because then it's very, very hard to lift. So if you were to add colors, for instance, you would wash this down, you'd roll out your next color, and since your drawing is still attached, as long as you attach it well, you place this back down on a second color, you can make a second color. Third color, fourth color. Very easy to register. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that, and enjoy working at home. Take care, thank you.